Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel for the first video on Graf Zeppelin. Let's find out if she is worth it in this video and let's have a wee chat about her. I'll be honest with you, Graf Zeppelin has to be one of my favourite characters in the game, especially since she was added, even though she, even though her mechanics have changed in a lot of aspects. When she was first added with under the RTS style, you could play her as an assault ship. You could advance with destroyers, use smoke, and damn, you see when you got in close to cruisers? Doing an anvil drop with the bombers and torpedoes and her secondaries, you melted ships and it was fucking terrifying to see. However, the dynamics haven't changed in a lot of ways. The secondaries on this thing are still god tier in every way, shape or form. Due to the fact that she's got a reinforced hull, destroyer caliber guns from 120mm and below, with our IFH, she will struggle to pen you, so destroyers do need to swap the AP to be able to do damage. Which is pretty damn terrifying. She has very accurate secondaries. I mean very bloody accurate secondaries. She has got an unholy amount of them. Which is pretty damn insane. It's fucking crazy. She also has the fastest torpedo bombers. And the fastest dive bombers at her, at her tier. Which is bloody crazy. I think you can get to about 227 knots using speed boosts on them. And 190 knots on base travel. Which is damn bloody ludicrous, it really is. It really is madness. So, for her hit points, she's got 52,000 hit points with a torpedo reduction of 16%, which is not too bad. Aircraft, she gets ME55A attack aircraft for the fight, like for fighters. Each carry 4 rockets per payload, 40mm of penetration, which isn't bad, and a 26% chance of causing fire. So, her attack and flight is 2. And there's 8 per squadron, with 12 on the deck. Now, it does have quite a slow prep time of 79 seconds, and a detectability of 9 kilometers. These aircraft are pretty standard in every aspect. 136 knot speed, 176 max, with 5 seconds of engine boost and 10 seconds of reload, so pretty standard on that aspect. Now, the torpedo bombers are where they come into a world of their own. The torpedo bombers, 2000 hit points each. Speed is 181 knots and a max of 221, which is unreal. 20 seconds of engine boost, 40 second reload on it, you get 3 per packing flight, 9 per squadron, and 14 on the deck. And its prep time is 80 seconds per plane, with a detectability of 9 kilometers. You get 1 torpedo per plane, with a max damage of 5,333, with a rough torpedo speed of 37 knots and a max range of 6 kilometers. Her bombers get a speed of 190 knots and a max speed of 232, which is insane. So they are a bit more fragile with 1,850 hit points each. 5 seconds of engine boost, 40 second reload standard. You get 2 per attacking flight, you get per squadron and 12 on deck. So as you can see, she does not have a big hangar capacity. The prep time is 92 seconds per plane. So if you lose one, you have the 1 minute 30 seconds to regen it. Detectability standard 9, max bomb damage 5,800, and each plane drops one bomb. Pretty standard that way. Her artillery is insane, so she gets 6 dual 105s and 8 dual 150s. Her 105s have a reload rate of 3.2 seconds, a 6% chance of causing fire, initial velocity of 900 meters a second, and 26mm of pen, which is bloody crazy with a reload rate of 3.2 seconds. Her 150mm guns have a 7.1 second reload, 1700 max damage and 9% chance of fire with 38mm of pen and a velocity of 875. Which is crazy. It really is. She's got a max firing range of 9.5km which is, <laughs> is fucking damn good for a carrier, it really is. She does get access to your typical airstrike, you get one attack flight, so you get... It's, it drops one bomb, 4200 damage, so not what you call the best, but... Better than nothing. With a range of about 7 kilometers, which is pretty standard for this range. Her AA though is a bit lackluster in all aspects. So you get 7 quad 20 millimeters, 11 dual 37s, and 6 times dual purpose 105s. For a continuous damage of 298, and damage by shell explosions 1400, with priority sector reinforcement of 35%, and firing range of 5.2k. So, not the best, but not bad at all. Her max speed is 33.6 knots, turning circles 1140 meters, and rudder shift is 13.7. Detectability by sea is 14 kilometers, ability by subs and aircraft is 10k, 
and a sure detect abilities too. So not bad at all overall. Her armor is actually pretty potent. So she's got 21 mil of armor all around her. Which is pretty good once you angle it correctly. So you can be pretty annoying for submarine. Well, I shouldn't say subs for destroyers. And some cruisers that actually damage you. Which is pretty damn nice actually. It really is. So you do get that there luxury of being able to have some extra additional plating. However, you're still a carrier. You will die eventually. You can only absorb so much damage. You're not... You want to use your secondaries to ambush things that are getting too close to you and punish things that get far too close to you. If you're playing like I do where you try and get up at times in front or if you're sitting back like I do as well sometimes, it depends on my mood. You want to try and use destroyer smoke to your advantage or islands and keep sneaking. That's the best way I can I can say in every aspect on the front. Now personally speaking, I secondary specter. So I went for Air Grips Mod 1, Damage Control Systems Mod 1, Secondary Battery Mod 1, Repeal Modification Mod 2, and Concealment. However, the recommended is Air Grips Mod 1, Aircraft Engines Mod 1, Aircraft Attack Modification 1, Bombers Modification 1, and Conceal sorry, not Concealment Systems, a Flight Control Modification 1. So yeah, they're the recommended ones, but personally, I prefer brawling and being up in your face at times. So, secondary Spectner, to have a troll, and fuck of art was the way I like planner and having a bit of fun. So, let's round up the pros. She's got the fastest torpedo bombers and dive bombers at the tier, which is fucking crazy. She's got decent rocket damage with penetration and fire chances not being too bad. Torpedo bombers drop decently good torpedoes with... Three bombers per attack, well, three torpedoes per attack run. Bombers are dropped by diving. Their accuracy is not the best, but when they hit, they hit. The secondary armament is a serious threat and probably one of the most dangerous things on the ship, especially to destroyers. And the Citadel can be pretty difficult to hit at times, as fact it's below the waterline. Not impossible, but it can be very hard to hit. The attack aircraft are fragile, though, so it does get balanced out with these cons. Torpedo bombers and dive bombers have piss per agility. Torpedoes are... they're slow. And the AP bomb damage is pretty poor due to the fact that we get two bombs. A sweep isn't the best aller and the concealment is horrendous overall. It really is. However, I do recommend her in every way, shape or form. Considering the fact that she is interesting to play and different. So whenever you can, do pick her up in my personal opinion for that one reason. She's unique, you can play her aggressively, and you can get up in front of people. As a carrier, you can actually get into the face of people and laugh at them as you eat their health. It's fucking great. It really is. So, what consumables should you get? You're pretty, your consumables are pretty standard, really. CAP fighter, damage control for the Graf Zeppelin. Attack aircraft, engine cooling patrol, fighters. Same as torpedo dive bombers, it's all pretty standard that way. Nothing different, nothing more unique. But personally speaking, I do rem I do recommend secondary specner. However, the recommended commander skills are air supremacy for tier one, improved engine uh, sorry improved engines, and torpedo bomber. Depending on which one you want to go. Personally speaking, I prefer swift flying fish to get the speed up a wee bit, and repair specialist as. It is handy to having that wee bit of extra heal the loiter a bit longer. Survivability expert is not also is also not a bad choice. Aircraft armor is not a bad choice either. Same as enhanced armor penetration and flight stabilization. Not all bad choices to be honest with you. Bomber flight control isn't bad. Torpedo proximity fuse is not too bad of a choice either. And the same as the second, well sorry, defensive fire expert which I went for. To me that is probably the most fun one to go for. You used to be able to get your secondary spec out to about 11 kilometers, but due to nerfs and balances, you get her out to about 9.5 an hour with all the stuff done correctly. So to me, they're the most fun ones to play as you want the secondary spec this ship, just to be a bit of a jackass. However, it's not all laughs. If, what, if you fuck up in this ship, you fuck up in this ship. Losing planes is painful. It is very costly to do. It's same as brawling in it. You don't have a heal, so when you get damaged, you get damaged badly. It will hurt you. It really will hurt you. 
She's unique in the aspect that she can take damage and she can be up close to the front with her secondaries. But is it worth it? Yeah, it really is. It's more the fact that she's so different and so unique in her playstyle. The fact you've got a choice of what to do and what way you want to play her. I think it's worth it in every way, shape or form. But with everyone, if you want something different to play as a carrier or something a bit more unique, yeah, go for it. Pick her up in the seal. Pick her up from a box or a crate when she comes back or drops. But anyways, with everyone, thanks again for watching. Please like and subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed the video talking about the Graf Zeppelin. Goldie, but a goldie in regards to carriers, as it was the first German air it was the first German aircraft carrier to be added into the game back in 2019. So it's five year old now. Anyways, with everyone, thanks again for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I hope you enjoyed the video.